is dedicated to childhood cancers, and only about 3% of funds raised for the National Cancer, Can Cancer Institute go directly to pediatric cancer research. And whereas the funding for pediatric cancer research has gone down steadily since 2003, and whereas despite the facts, children, childhood cancer research is vastly and consistently underfunded, and whereas despite major advances in treatment, it is still critically important to conduct research and increase awareness regarding pediatric cancer. Now therefore, I made Jerry Schaffenberger and the Middletown Township Committee to hereby proclaim September 2013 as Childhood Cancer Awareness Month in the Township of Middletown in order to help raise awareness of pediatric cancer and its victims. And I just want to say uh, that was uh, recommended that particular proclamation by Frank Mo Mayor Frank Mullen of Highlands. I really want to appreciate uh, him for being such an advocate for our childhood cancer awareness. Next on the agenda will be a presentation of a presidential proclamation to Middletown Veterans Affairs Committee for commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War. I would like to invite members of the Veterans Affairs Committee, Jim Morari, Tom Garrison, and Dennis Beauregard, as well as Rich Furlong Tom, and Tom Hackey to come to the podium to accept the presentation. I just want to point out that as a committee, I can speak to all these members, we 
are especially grateful to the mayor and the township committee and their support for, for our veterans. Uh, it's been an honor to work with them. Thank you. Thank you, Jim.
Given on the, the hand and gray seal of the state of New Jersey this fourth day of September in the year 2013, Chris Christie Governor. Authorizing renewal of license 1331, 
very ambitious hard work of our PIOs and dealerships. Um, and uh, she's done a really good job of highlighting and trying to condense a lot of the township's history, 100 years plus, and a lot of the highlights of the town is this document, which you'll be able to get one on Wheel Town Day. Um, and that's a treat. Also, you'll see outside, when you leave tonight, stop by the display cases outside. That's courtesy of the Historical Commission, um, particularly uh, Linda Moreska, who has been in, um, her family's been in Middletown for several generations, so there's a lot of great stuff out there. And um, so check that out. And then the other thing I just wanted to bring up was I had the pleasure of uh, seeing the beta version of our app, which we're uh, highly anticipating as well, hopefully in October sometime. So, no time keeps moving forward, especially technologically. And um, so, we have another good thing to see in October. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, I have quite a few things to get on for today. This past uh, Wednesday was our 9 11 ceremony, and uh, it was as moving and as, as appropriate as any I can remember even in this understated, silent uh, form. Uh, we had a little bit over 100 people turn out, and uh, with a lot, of, uh, a lot of wet eyes walking through the memorial after the, uh, the moment of silence at 846. And it's really, uh, it's one of those things that we really can never let up as a, as a township here, as a community. I think the minute we start to minimize what happened on that day and let the, the weight of time really weigh on us is when we're going to really be in trouble. And I think the more we remember these people, it intensifies, if anything. Uh, I think year after year, as each milestone is missed more and more, I think you really, uh, we really do the victims justice by remembering them, coming together as a community, and uh, really making it a special day and remembering their memories and everything that we lost, because we lose a little bit more each year with each year that passes. So it was really a beautiful, it was a beautiful day. We did the ceremony. A lot of the families came up to us and really uh, very pleased with the way the township handled it. It was very tasteful and uh, just a great job by all. Uh, the grounds were fantastic and it was uh, just one of those remarkable days. Unfortunate that, that we have to have it, but the fact that we have to have it, it was uh, really quite well done. On a little lighter note, this past Saturday was the IBCA uh, flea market. The idea of each uh, community association. And I keep kidding them that they have a pipeline to God or something because every time they have an event, the weather is picture perfect. It looks like a warm bottle of anything. So it was really a, it's a great facility, even though it hasn't been out to Tanya Keller to see the new field behind there. It was just a great, great event. Good to see so many people out there and uh, enjoying the day and a uh, you know, wonderful part of town. That really is one of the hidden jewels. Um, Next, not on September 29th at the Arts Center, there was going to be a uh, fundraiser for the Arts Council. And our own Vinny Brand, if you don't know who Vinny Brand is, uh, he's the owner of the Stress Factory at a comedy club in New Brunswick. And he's a professional comedian, very, very well respected, very, uh, he's nationally known, he's been on a lot of TV shows, a lot of international uh, comedy festivals. And if you've never seen him, you really have to make a point of coming. The tickets are only. $20. I know I have a bunch of friends who are coming, and it's going to be a great night, a great cause to support the Arts Council, and uh, you'll have a few laughs along the way, so it really is going to be a, a lot of fun. That's September 29th. It's a Sunday evening at around 7 o'clock. So both games are over, but we had just the Giants are playing. You probably can use a laugh. Recently, too, we had the ribbon cutting for the new soccer fields at, at, at Muxmont School, and uh, Talk about the source of pride for the township. When he stepped onto the soccer field, this is actually a, a multi-use uh, field. It's soccer, lacrosse, field hockey, and football. Am I missing anything, Tony? Uh, field hockey, lacrosse, soccer, football, and I think the community is missing. Okay. Yeah, but, <laughs> no, they, they, a tremendous facility. They, uh, T and M and the builders did a tremendous job. Uh, the project was so well run that it was either on time or ahead of schedule the whole way. So fantastic. There were a couple hundred kids out there in uniforms and cheerleaders. It was great. And uh, I think we're going to have a lot of years of wonderful use out of that facility. Something we can all be proud of. Uh, 
Oh, the last thing I want to mention is on October 8th, we're going to have an economic development uh, town hall at the Art Center. It's actually on the same, it's on the normal night for the Economic Development Committee, and we're going to have a meeting there, and it's going to be a presentation of some of the economic development uh, projects that we have going on in town, and some of the areas that we would like to see redeveloped, and you know, businesses brought back in, and I know I mentioned to some of the uh, IBCA about the money property, which is sort of a uh, black eye in the area, that we'd like to see that come back, and uh, I think it's going to be a great, uh, great event, People are going to be able to see what's going on in town. They'll be able to tell us what they would like to see as far as economic development, what kind of businesses, what kind of uh, facilities, what parts of town they would like to see business come into. And a strong commercial tax rate base is good for all of us. Even if it doesn't directly affect us, it really has an impact on the, uh, on the budget revenues here. And a strong commercial tax rate base certainly eases the burden on the residents' uh, property tax burden. And um, just finally, Little Town Day, we're all looking forward to it. Start saying your prayers now for a nice day, and that's all we need. With that, I'm going to turn it over to you folks. Okay. Before we get started, I just want to remind everybody, please make sure to say, state your name and address, and also to keep your comments to five minutes. We want to make sure everybody has a chance to speak, and uh, it will be strictly enforced. So please be cooperative, and if you have to go beyond the five minutes, to stay around and chat with you further, but uh, please you know, respect the project rule. Okay, with that, oh, we have a live one in front of you. Get my gavel out. I like the hair. I got them all done, though. Right, so, Tony Jones, the uh, court. And I'm going to hear about Jones' court. I'm here about a big deal of And uh, please, it would be a tower. She would let the loser ask. She goes all right now, right? Anyway, go on back to the, see what you have decided. Oh, actually, uh, I'm sorry, I got Just so you know that Ted and Tina are sitting down this week uh, to work out a plan. And one of the things that we can bring up is sort of that hybrid idea of the Rome yeah. Superman and that to see if it would be feasible. And TNM being the engineering uh, maintenance. They would be the one to maybe determine the viability of something like that, where you could do sort of a hybrid, where you have normal strips and a uh, speed bump, so you're not top heavy with one or the other. So uh, that's one of the things that's scheduled for this week. So uh, with all the field and everything, kind of push back a little bit, but the, uh, none of the fields um, we can get their attention to this. That's certainly a good thing. We will have a meeting. Thank you. 
You know, it's a funny thing. I go there, I go there for average once a week. They don't always know who I am, especially if I come my own clothes, you know. And they run up and they want to help you on the road with any happy stuff. It's amazing. You know, when I see them do other people, I tell Ted every time, it's amazing. No, it's good. It's great to go there and uh, it's not Yeah. Well, of course, you know, you're itself. It's just a nice to work. All that's your own stuff. But yeah. the point, of course, for you know, so good, uh, good, uh, Okay, thanks, man. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In this case, Ms. Matt.
sign up for alerts. Hopefully, a word spreads that way. It's newspapers too. Newspapers. Yeah. Yeah. There, there, there are a lot of people in the area who know that this is an issue, and uh, um, we will get the word out. We'll put signs up. We'll um, put it on the television. We'll put it on the website. Um, we'll put uh, press release in the paper when we when we finalize the date for the meeting. The big thing is to try to get. Um, Frankly, the thing we really need to do is get congressional uh, representatives there because these are these are federal regulations. Like when you ask about what's the floodplain administrator doing about the, the IP certification, floodplain administrator has no power in that whatsoever. It's, it's all federal. You need you need Congress um, to make some changes. In I had a meeting with FEMA um, and a staff a week or two weeks ago about this very issue. And some of, the, some of the ways of solving the profit, flood insurance problem for people in, in the neighborhood require literally federal legislation, really Congress to act. And as you, can, you saw just the politics that played out during the Sandy recovery um, bailout, or even not bailout, but the legislation, financial legislation, it, it, it's, it's difficult to do. And, um, but it's, it's a real problem of the township committees take it very seriously. We're going to sort of go to battle over this issue. Um, I think the idea, the, the idea of getting the flood plain, the, 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 the dike certified again, is probably a long, long-term solution. It would, would cost millions and millions of dollars. But from our viewpoint, that's a lesser issue. But the dike is actually being prepared right now. The contract has already been awarded for that. Um, and they, they've actually started already. Uh, so it'll be repaired back to the way it was before. And our position is that it works. No one got flooded in the neighborhood. You shouldn't be treated um, in the same way that other neighborhoods are from a flood insurance rate standpoint um, when they got substantial flooding and, and your neighborhood did So that's our position, and we're going to try to pursue that. But we, we want to set up a date. We want to make sure we can get at least two or three federal legislators to be there because they're really the ones who are going to take the message to Washington. That's what's and kind of driving setting up the date. I think that's just so scary for the residents, knowing the uphill battle that has to be fought on the municipal level. What, what, what becomes important is that we, we put the town and the residents of that area in, in a defensible position such that we can make a strong case and we can be successful in our attempt to, uh, uh, to get the, uh, the insurance rates uh, mitigated for those areas that are, that are in a different uh, position. So, It'll, it'll take a little bit of time, but we'd like to do it right, we'd like to do it properly, and then uh, it's a definite case that we have here for those residents. Yeah, I mean, one bit of good news is that, according to the people I spoke to with FEMA, um, this area of New Jersey isn't the only place in the country to be in this situation. There are other places around the country where old flood control projects have been built, put in place, but yet subsequently decertified, yet they still work. And they're grappling with how to establish a rate structure that makes sense for those types of things. So it's not just us, and that's good actually, because yes. other parts of the country and other legislators who will want to do the same thing for their communities. So that I think helps our case a little bit. Just keep in mind that you're not alone with this. At least we'll be able to fight it. We can get the attention of the uh, federal legislators. A little bit easier than they folks, you know, residents. Right, I, did, I did go through being a chance because there is that individual you can. Yeah. And then yeah. if they direct it as well, you should, you know, contact your, so this is what I thought, yeah. you know, checking. Sure. If I could just add for a Sure. This is, aside from just that levy project, which they certified, which caused a lot of the issues many years ago with the flood map changes, if you remember correctly, forcing more people into the flood zone. Now, thankfully, you know, that, that may have helped in the, in the situation with Sandy where some people may not have flood insurance required because of the positive worked out, but it is such a complex situation, um, federal, and trust me, the township, and I know the Deputy Mayor and I took a ride last week with the floodplain administrator, with the township administrator, to look at areas of Port Monmouth and areas of Leonardo, because not only, I'll tell you how complex this is, not to get too deep in the weeds, but the federal government, you know, Federal legislators have been asleep at the switch in this whole this whole deal with the National Flood Insurance Protection Program. I mean, the legislation 
changed last year in July, took the subsidies away, made all these changes to these certifications of that nature. But the real issue is, it's called the community rating system. So the government has the ability to affect any part of the community under this national plan, which in my opinion is absolutely bogus. So despite the fact that, you know, even the certification, we have some issues here that we're going to have to make sure that people that were substantially damaged elevate their properties within a four-year, you know, basis, or that can affect flood insurance in different areas of the town. That's how convoluted this whole federal national flood insurance program is. And we're working pretty hard with our local legislature, you know, our state senator, our two assembly people, um, a few of the congressmen, you know, we're trying to get in here, we're trying to get attention to it, but it's a very complicated matter. It's just not as easy as us saying, you know, what can we do to recertify? Because that's oh, you the core of the step, yeah. right? It has, it has to start. It starts right. Out. It starts here, but unfortunately, the federal government has a great way of making us deal out their bad hand, mm -hmm. and that's uh, you know, the unfortunate part too. That's what makes it scary for the residents. Exactly. <laughs> so we're we're here over here. We're going to continue. Before you said that, you want to leave your email address. I can shoot you an email. Thank you. We'll leave your time and your address. I appreciate it. Thank you. Just take a break, please. Uh, anybody else here in the seat? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank
So sooner or later, the contamination will just dissipate somewhere? That's the goal, yeah. So, yeah. The source is gone, so. Yeah, right. Back to what Tracy had said, um, you know, you, you should point out that there has been ongoing efforts like you have to restore that um, flood control system to its original height when it was the vessel. That's part of the plan that's ongoing right now. <coughs> um, going forward, like you said, Fort Mom, there's a $90 million project to do the same thing in Fort Mom, which has been done. Uh, I'd like to know what date you have planned, but I believe Frank Cole will be very interested in coming. We're going to work with his office and, and other legislators before we find the set date. We want to make sure they can all have to work with him. We should know. Make sure he's there. Oh, I, I will. Oh, yeah. yeah, but you know, he knows it's not just their staff. You know, we want them to Right. Work. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Anybody else care to see?
Yeah. They are, the, uh, just so you, if I may just say, the, the information was in the audit, the audit was available by so, sometime in September or you know, uh, October of 2000. So, so to answer your question clearly, is this came out of the audited financial statement, as you referenced, AFS, and that audit was available in September, yeah, uh, September of 2012, um, where that money would have been available. Now, it's possible for the, I said this to you at the beginning, I said it in public comment, and I'm sorry for answering this, the member of the board, but uh, that's there, but is it possible for the CFO to know when the director money was there. I mean, the director claims she didn't know the money was there. What the CFO was telling you, as he told me that directive when I was there last year, is that the money was there in September according to the appointed financial statement. Now, you can lead, as I said, to in public comment, in my public comments last meeting, you can lead to the conclusion as to whose responsibility it is to know about uh, that money when preparing a budget. I have my view on that since you that uh, circumstance, you can have your view on that circumstance. That's about as best of the conclusions that we have. I want an administrative investigation because of lack of clarity of this responsibility that lays, that attempts to lay it on this, this committee. You can lay it on the library. There's a lack of due diligence uh, at a minimum, and there may be some, whatever the legal terms are, malfeasance, misfeasance, or whatever the other feasance is. And uh, it seems to me there should be an investigation uh, to settle this matter so it's not just left, left that, uh, to hang and dry and, and, and let the whole matter pass. Is there responsibility involved in this? Maybe it's the order, but I don't know who it is. Neil, can I ask you, have you asked this question at the library board meeting? Yes. Yeah. Okay, and I'm not going to get an answer. But, uh, okay, because this is a little bit out of the purview of it. The they have exactly the meetings to solve this. Sure. I'm happy my yeah. in this yeah. now. The audit, the audit, as the, the, the head of the township finance is here, I look at the audit to find out all the balances that, I'm, that I need. If I'm the head of the library, I would look in the audit, especially in her portion of it, to find out all the balances that are available there. That audit is prepared and, and delivered um, sometime in September of 2012. It's not my responsibility to make call her up and make sure that she knows all the information in there. That's everybody's own individual responsibility. Uh, I know all the information that I need to know to run the town. The library has a separate board, it's a separate entity that runs itself. And for me to get involved in whether or not she read it, I can tell you every other year for, from the time I was here, she knew the balance as soon as that point came out. So if that serves as an answer, then take that well, as an answer. You give me a clear direction that uh, this Wednesday night I need to go before the library board and ask when did the director know for certain that she had the money available. And when, if I get to when I get an answer from that, uh, I can uh, make a, an appropriate comment. Good luck with that. Before the, uh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Good luck with that. We often have to wrap up with anger in the high end. Yeah. Well, I have uh, five minutes. Thanks, but I'll let you know. Thanks, Leo. Anybody else care to speak? Yes, ma'am. Yes.
We have one microphone or none microphone, and it's very hard for the audience to hear. I know one um, friend said that uh, we even with two hearing aids, he couldn't hear, and the chairs were kind of far back. So if there's anything to look into on that, I would suggest maybe for the head table or whatever, a microphone for two people if they don't have them. Uh, I did, um, there was, went to the workshop meeting last time, and uh, as we know, there were some questions about public comments uh, parameters. And I did follow over to find out what the policy is, but it's been six days and I haven't heard anything, so I don't know if there isn't a policy, or they could find it, or maybe I need to write it, but I know that if they have one, you know, they're supposed to get it to you right away instead of waiting for six or seven days. So I'm looking forward to tomorrow and see what it brings. I hope I'll be back. Um, Mr. Rekatanti at the workshop meeting also, I did mention the graffiti that's been facing my a couple blocks from my house on Highway 36. And it is still there, just so you know. I think I could have made it over half an hour if I could have reached up to it, but it does still exist. Question about insurance, the health insurance here. Um, I know that the papers has been a problem with it. Our part-time work is being cut back, so we don't have to pay for insurance. And then there was a comment from some administrators that um, Obamacare was the, Paul, the fault of that. But my contention is that by reducing the hours of our valued employees, they're not getting insurance. So I really do believe that um, they should, somehow they should be able to have some insurance. Everybody really wants to need for that thing. Um, that would be the main thing that we look Yeah, we see still there. Yeah, do you have any comments or answers on any of my thoughts? Well, I'll say it's about the graffiti of the private talkers, so we can't want to paint for ourselves. We have to give you out property owner. Okay. The chance to do it. We have to find property owners some time to do it. Private property, you can't go and paint over it. It's tempting as it is sometimes. We can't do that. Okay. Yes. So we're hoping to yes. It just, it just looks so bad. And then we talked last time about the buildings over in New York. I think it's on the Is there any hope? I don't see any change on a lot of taxes and the and stuff that that apartment building has been there for years. Yeah, they, they actually are very close to getting the certificates of occupancy. I'd say within the next uh, week or so. So those repairs will all be done before that. Okay. Okay. Well, we got a little off here. Thank you. Anybody else here to see? Seeing no further members of the public come forward, we we'll close the public portion. And I just want to say, I just want to say one quick thing. I, I, I meant to say this during my comments. Um, not that many of you may have read about uh, a caravan of bikers who came through Washington, D.C. I think there were about 900,000. And unfortunately, a lot of the papers and the press failed to cover it. And this is really a, it was, you know, Maybe a different group would have gotten coverage, but the fact that writers came out in such numbers, I think was amazing. And they came out and they listed about six things that they were supporting. Certainly the true victims of 9-11, certainly the U.S. military, the people who died on 9-11, the first responders, the Constitution, just a great thing. And I cannot believe that the press ignored it. It's incredible. You had to go and find some little YouTube video or anything, and I know they got turned down for a permit. But they really deserve a lot of credit. It showed a great, uh, great fortitude and uh, patriotism on their part, and they really deserve to have it acknowledged. And for whatever little bit it does here, I'd like to acknowledge it. And before we go, Middletown Madness will be mailed probably in early October, the first one this year. We're really excited about it. It's going to be good, we have a lot of good news in it, and we're looking forward to it coming out. With that, move for adjournment. Yes. Yes. Yes.